This is Michaela McLean, and you're listening to Beauty by Design. Hey everyone, welcome back. Thank you for being here. It's time to talk about the full moon, lunar eclipse, and Libra. But before we get into it, of course, I want to remind you, I've got an entire library of deep dive episodes into all 64 gates in season two, and I have a PDF guide, clickable links, that'll take you directly to the episode and give you key words for each one. All you have to do to get this guide is leave the podcast a five-star rating and review on Apple Podcasts and send me a screenshot to the email linked in the show notes. That's it. You'll get it. And each episode in season two goes into everything from the gate energy, the center, the channel partner, the programming partner, you know, the gene keys, all of my notes and personal anecdotes as a four one that is just obsessed with all this information. So it's fantastic. And it's a really great way to, you know, help support the podcast because the reviews really do help get it pushed out to more people. So greatly appreciated. And I always just want to mention that. And of course, if you want more free things, charts, all that good stuff. And somebody pointed out this out to me the other day that when you get charts on my website, all of your gates are listed out in order. So you can go through with your podcast guide and listen to all of your gates and learn about yourself and become an expert in yourself. And then the classes, the yoga nidras, all that stuff. And I mean, I just have to say, it's so interesting that this is in Libra and the themes that Libra carries because man, it is potent for me right now. And your girl has been hard at work. There is so much brewing in the background. It's so exciting. Finally, I feel like there's some some momentum and stuff, you know, things moving for me right now. And I can't wait. I feel like I'm always saying this and I'm like, but no, but no, for real, for real now. Uh, I think there's there's gonna be something to look forward to in the in the fairly near future. And that I don't know, it's very exciting. All of this is very you know, eclipse season feels. <laughs> anyway, let's get on to the episode. Of course, everything can be found in the show notes or my Instagram bio at Michaela McLean. But let's talk about this eclipse. So here we are at the full moon lunar eclipse in Libra. And an eclipse is like the full moon mul- multiplied, right? It's the grand finale, majorly heightened emotions. Eclipses are always wild cards. It's a time period where the sun and the moon are not functioning normally. And of course, this one is in Libra. So it's carrying all these Libran themes. And this is happening Monday, March 25th at 12 a.m. on the dot. Typically, full moons are this release and reflection period where you're looking back on the past six months. You know, I'd always be like, go back and look at what you were doing six months ago. What were you writing down? Let's see how far you've come, all of that type of stuff. But in the case of an eclipse, this doesn't play by the normal rules. They really contain this potential for major change, timeline shifts, and rerouting. I like to think of it as a time to take your hand off the wheel right? Let go and let God and just release the illusion of human control. Let the universe, the divine take over for your best interest. And while we're on the subject, you know, why is that? Eclipses involve the nodes of the moon. They are not planets, but they're sensitive mathematical points. And we've all got our own personal set of north and south node placements in our chart. It's your own personal karma and dharma. But then there's what is happening currently in the sky at any given moment affecting the collective. And right now, the North Node is in Aries, what we are collectively moving towards for our highest evolution, which is really, you know, themes of like putting yourself first, you and your needs, being a passionate pioneer, being driven, you know, to to do you, right? If you've heard Ryan and I, our episodes, we've been talking about this a lot for, for quite a while because <laughs> it's a big, it's an overarching theme. You know, the nodes are almost like this background frequency that are always like in play, whether you're super conscious of it or not. And then of course, that puts the South Node in the sister sign. The sister sign is Libra, which we're talking about today. And this is what we're collectively releasing and evolving away from, which Libra shadow stuff that we want to move away from, right? Libra is a beautiful sign. My daughter's a Libra. I have so much Libra in my chart, right? It's like Libra is lovely. It's not, it's not native, but 
like everything, every gate or every sign, we've got a shadow side and a high expression. So we're, we're collectively wanting to move away from the shadow part of Libra that we all do. And some of that is codependency, being afraid to speak up for ourselves for fear of rocking the boat. You know, it's that setting yourself on fire to keep other people warm. Like that's Libra and it's low expression. Okay, so back to back to the full moon, the eclipse element of this. So like I said, it hands off the wheel, you know, they coincide with the full moon. It's when the sun and the moon are on opposite sides of the zodiac. So we've got the sun is in Aries, the full moon is over there in Libra. And during the lunar eclipse, the earth comes directly between the sun and the moon, making the earth's shadow fall on the moon, which results in a darkening or reddening of the moon's surface. And this event makes the zodiac signs opposite each other more significant, more heightened, right? Again, so we're talking Aries and Libra here. And it shines a light on the part of ourselves, our lives that are usually hidden, and it helps to transform the way we see things and the way that we are. So again, it's like the universe or the divine is forcefully pushing us forward, slamming certain doors closed in some areas and opening new ones, new portals in others. Eclipses are typically major turning points, surprises, plot twists. There's just, like I said, it's a wild card, you know? And it's always like, mm, the only way out is through. The universe is redirecting us to be more on course and in alignment with our dharma. And eclipses offer us this involuntary opportunity for that redirection, you know? And it's like basically pointing us back to look at the area of our life that needs to change. And it's essentially like there's no turning back at this point. <laughs> Change that continues to reverberate in your life for months to come. It can set off a chain reaction of events. And again, this is closure. It's like kind of putting a bow on something and calling it good. These catalysts bring the truth to light. And it's it can act as a major wake-up call from the universe. It's time to move on and level up. And so what you can find is like people frequently, new people coming in, old ones leaving for good hopefully making way for better. And oftentimes you just find things getting stripped away that no longer serve you. And that helps to speed up the timelines. Timelines get sped up significantly around this time period. And it's really like a snake shedding its skin. You know, it's like, I'm done with the old and, and now I need to move on to the new. So one thing I always like to remind people at at the eclipse, because again, this is like every six months-ish, we need that good reminder is be really mindful about your strategy and authority in human design. That is the thing that's going to help you flow through all of this with the least amount of resistance. And it was interesting, so Ryan and I, this episode hasn't come out yet, the April transits, but we were talking about the next eclipse. So there'll be, you know, when we're at the new moon here in two more weeks, we will have the, the, the eclipse, the new moon solar eclipse in Aries. And he was very very specific and very adamant about respecting and acknowledging the energy of the eclipse at that time. You know, just just being present for it. And I really like that. So I wanted to reiterate that because you won't hear that until after this episode airs. So as always, with a full moon, we're going to talk about all the usual, right? <laughs> and always say, Hey, when we want to exfoliate because it's both a physical and an energetic act and you're sloughing off the past to prepare for the future. And in this case, you know, with the, the eclipse is like, I'm willingly giving it up. I'm willingly cleaning things off of myself from a skincare perspective. When you exfoliate, when you do something, you know, to, to clear the way, whatever you're doing afterward, the treatments or the products, they're going to have essentially less to fight through to penetrate and work better. So that just think about that concept and apply it to your life. So make sure you change the sheets, the bedding, run the vacuum, open the windows, do the stuff to help circulate the energy. Um, since the full moon eclipse is in Libra, let's look at some ways to bring that that energy into our beauty rituals. And I want to be want to be clear here as well. This is more about the acknowledgement of the energy rather than I'm trying to manifest, right? This is just, we're just doing the beauty things that make us feel good at this time. So starting with our keywords for Libra, they include beauty, balance, fairness, homeostasis. It's we versus me. It's cooperation, diplomacy, awareness of the needs of others. 
And Libra's archetype is justice, lady justice. It's the art connoisseur and it's elegance personified. Libra is a cardinal sign. So it's the one that gets actually autumn started and it's an air sign. It's, I always think of Libra as like this beautiful, gentle breeze and it's ruled by Venus, the, the goddess of love and beauty which rules what we find beautiful and what others find beautiful about us. It's about attraction. It's it's blessings. It's very wonderful things. So, you know, one of the things you can do at this time is explore the beauty of your Venus placements. If you wish, that's a nice thing to do. I love Venus very, very much. <laughs> As I'm sure you can see from like my imagery and things that I use, you can take a salt bath. Of course, I always recommend that. Salt is very cleansing and purifying so you're symbolically cleansing to set us set yourself up for a new cycle and the oils that i would love to use for libra are rose of course and then also peppermint geranium jasmine neroli lang lang those are all perfect for for libra they, they have traditional associations and so one of the products i really love to use at this time is little fox orange blossom lang bang there is an essential oil, but there is also a body scrub. It's really, really lovely. All of my little fox, there's so many things that are just so Venusian in the line. And then as far as crystals go, I love to work with rose quartz for Libra, opal, watermelon, tourmaline, ametrine, and blue lace agate, all for various reasons that correspond to the sign. And of course, clear quartz is always wonderful to use. It's so readily available and it's inexpensive and it's fantastic. It's it's an amplifier. So they're like, oh, I have some rose oil, clear quartz. They're safe to put in the bath. That's really important too. <laughs> it's not going to do anything bad to you. And you can put all that, that, that concoction in, maybe some rose petals and have just a nice a nice eclipse bath is really like, you know, again, acknowledging the energy at play. Um, okay, so for Libra, anything related to beauty, because it is the sign of beauty, it's ruled by Venus. This is your excuse to have any and all beauty treatments. You know, I'm like, it's just so perfect. In fact, I always think this because my daughter's a Libra, and I'm like, oh, she loves to get manicures and pedicures. I'm like, we'll have to we'll have to go get get something done. <laughs> and I'd also uh, suggest activities like feng shui, which is about balancing and harmonizing your environment writing poetry that is very libra and anything that's related to the arts music go to the ballet you know go to the symphony do something do something along those lines or just listen to some classical music you know you could you could just watch the ballet on youtube you know <laughs> whatever works from your bathtub um Libra rules the seventh house of relationships, partnerships, and collaborations. So that's an important thing to take note. Of course, when we get to the end and we look at the house system, like where is this impacting you? You know, just kind of keep that in mind. There's other people are in play. This is a relational sign. Libra rules the skin, the kidneys, and the lower back in medical astrology. So some of the practices like physically that I love for this are, you know, things like Tai Chi. Again, I I'm like, you know, me and ballet, I'm always going to mention that Pilates, that always feels very Libra to me. But then I have been such a big fan of the class. I think that is also really perfect. I believe Taryn Toomey, the creator of it, is a Libra, I think, which is quite funny. So, you know, and I love it because it's, it is very balanced and it brings in so many different elements of all kinds of practices to really make you feel, to make you feel good, to make you feel balanced. Uh, you know, you could also hit up the art museum or just create art any way you like. We actually have an art room in my house, which my daughter is like always in. And I was like, oh, you know, maybe get the watercolors out or do something. You can just do something fun. Okay. So of course, make sure to listen to the Libra beauty meditation that I put out. You can listen to that yourself listen to it in your bathtub, in your bed. If you're in the treatment room, you can play it while you're giving a facial or receiving a facial. Another thing I love for Libra because it is an air sign is breath work, right? That's that's like really, that's rocket science, but you know, it's fantastic. And breath work is another way to clear out, especially at a time of an eclipse where you're like, I am willingly letting go of things you know, there's like the whole, it's a full moon, let go. You're like, mm, 
but for real this time, like really, really, if there's things in your life that are like trying to part ways, let's allow, let's breathe it out. Uh, okay. So then of course, beautifying your space. I love roses bringing in, especially pink roses, pale pink, like my signature pink, my ballet pink, <laughs> maybe a new art piece, something like that. A beautiful, like maybe it's a larger crystal, Ooh, a big, like rose quartz tower or something, you know, just something to really like make yourself feel pretty even in just in your environment. And of course, you know, my favorite, it's journaling, but this time again, it's an eclipse. So where it's more about the reflection, being a witness to anything versus trying to be an active participant, just like, okay, what is happening? You just really, you know, like taking stock, it's actually quite wild. I'm, I'm kind of spoiling it for myself, but I went back and looked at the notes from six months ago and I'm like, oh, wow. <laughs> just not even necessarily relevant for me but different people in my life like things that are happening and i and i was like wow this is pretty wild it's pretty wild so take a flip back go back and look at that six months ago when we had me would be the new moon eclipse that corresponds to this full moon one okay so one thing I want to point out is what Ryan said in the March transits episode. That's episode 282 if you want to go back and listen to what he said specifically. But here's some notes from, from that. He really liked this one, actually. You know, even though this is a south node full moon, ooh, you know, usually that'd be like, wow. But he was like, no, it's actually a really inspiring energy overall. Um, but of course, you have the release and the ending energy because it's the full moon and it's conjunct the south node. He mentioned faded culmination in relationships, cutting out people, people pleasing, those types of behaviors, and uneven relationships. I thought that was really potent. Uh, you know, being aware of right and wrong. Libra is about balance, justice, fairness. So I could see cutting people out who don't abide by those things, who maybe aren't Libra is about truth, you know, and different different things like that. Like Things being on the up and up and even Steven, like unbalanced relationships, you're going to be a big one in this, in this uh, eclipse. And he was saying accepting relationship changes, accepting your own desires over what others desire for you. This is a place for, for some healing. And I thought about that. I'm like, I could see either letting go of relationships that are on their way out and just being honest with yourself, being like, you know, my bless and release or as we get into the 18, you'll see it's like accepting people and their flaws for like what and who they are. And only you are going to know what's right for you. <laughs> okay. So this is happening in gate 18. Oh, our old friend gate 18. I always like to tell people I have her four times in my chart. So mm, we're, we're well acquainted, but this is a spleen gate. It is part of the collective abstract circuitry. So go back and listen to the 18 episode if you're curious, want to do the deep dive. And of course, if you have the PDF guide, you'll know exactly where to go and have the keywords with you, but it's coming from the cooler side of the chart. It's logical left brain. This is the one that I coined refinement and alignment. And since it's part of the spleen, it's your survival awareness center. It's fears and anxieties about your safety and well-being. But it also, in its high expression, is about instincts and intuition, what feels good, what feels safe. It's also about awareness in the present moment. That's something else to kind of like keep in mind. Ryan talking about responding to what eclipses bring you versus trying to be proactive and trying to run the show. It's like, no, again, hands off the wheel. Okay, so gate 18 is known as the gate of correction and it's work on what has been spoiled. The keynotes of this one are, it has a fear of authority. It's about correcting patterns. There is a fear of judgment, a fear of being judged by others or judging yourself really harshly. This one is definitely a gate. And I, like I said, because it's, it's so personal for me, it's like, it's a blessing and a curse for sure. It always sees what's wrong. It sees what's wrong in everything and everyone and has extreme perfectionist tendencies that can be turned inward or outward. And it's always finding the flaws, always picking things apart because it fears that nothing will ever be perfect. I find one of, one of my favorite things about this gate for myself is that I don't put other people on pedestals because I am hyper aware that we are all flawed humans, right? Most of all, myself. Ugh, everything could always be better. Me, you, anything and everything. 
it's an exhausting energy, personally. It's literally judgment. It's quite challenging. It's always looking for improvement and always knows things could be better. Things could be better than what they are. Right? And I do, I mentioned this when I talk about 18, I feel like it's something that's definitely stopped me from enjoying life to a certain degree. Again, you can't have it that many times and, and it not have some sort of significant impact in your life. Definitely, it makes me very picky. But the high expression of it is turning those tendencies outward and helping to improve things, being of service, you know, to to make things better for everyone, anyone and everyone. Using that extremely discerning eye to see what's out of balance and help make it right. It's got this magical ability to upgrade up level Beyonce. Let me upgrade you. <laughs> like, it's the Midas touch. I always say it's the extra tweak, the je ne sais quoi, you know, it's Anna Wintour. I just know that mm, that mm, whatever is gonna like make it better. And this is the one where I really, I really do focus on the 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 phrase refinement and alignment because it's so specific like to this particular stream in the chart. We're just gonna constantly make it better, make it better, make it better, right? Can't rest, but trying to use it trying to use it for good. The key, in my opinion, to 18 is is finally relaxing into the truth that nothing is ever going to be perfect and finding perfection in the imperfection. It's like wabi-sabi or kintsugi, which is the Japanese practice. And, and that, that word actually means gold seams. It's that practice of repairing broken pottery with gold, with gold paint. Go back to the meaning of this gate. It's work on what has been spoiled. That is exactly what you're doing there. You've broken a beautiful dish or a cup or something and you're repairing it. And it's about accepting and even highlighting flaws instead of trying to hide them, disguise them, or discard the broken and imperfect pieces or the imperfect things, including ourselves. And it's funny because I've been talking a lot more frequently on different episodes of the podcast where I'm like, you know, at the end of the day, all of this human design and gene keys and everything, it's it's all gentle shadow work. And I think, I, I know sometimes people hear this stuff and they're like, they want a virtue signal. Like, I, I'm a, I'm a, such a saint. I'm so wonderful. Like I'm living, you know, the, the acidic expression of this 24 seven. And it's like, oh my God, no, <laughs> like we're not, we're not. And I'm just, we're like, please let this call the shadows out of me. I want to own them. You know, Richard Rudd does, does talk significantly about that. It's like, the only way you can hope to transcend your shadows is to accept them as part of yourself, like give them love. Don't deny them. And this specific gate has been just really impactful. It's really helped me to connect to many people who also share it, whether that's in one-on-one -on -one sessions or group situations or whatever, you know, people who have it and have listened to the episode, they tell me they find immense healing and like it's therapeutic for them. It resonates. And it kind of absolves you, right? With any of these, any of these gates in the shadows, it's like it absolves you of being quote bad person, right? You're like, oh, actually, this can be good. Maybe I'm just not aware of how to use it in a positive way. I've only ever had the negative side reinforced, and I know that for 18 for myself. It's it's very much been that way of like I'm so picky and I'm, I'm nitpicky and all of this, like by my family from from the time I was a little kid. And you're like, oh shoot. Well, maybe had we known, I had this, I had this trait this many times in my chart. We know why I am that way, and we could use it for good, you know. And for and speaking, speaking of myself, some more, I have this. This eighteen is one of the one of the spots. Actually, two of the spots in my chart. It major prosperity placement for me. Like I'm like, how is one of my greatest weaknesses also potentially one of my greatest strengths? Something that's going to make me more magnetic and enhance my prosperity when I. When, when, only when I own and accept my own shadow here. And of course, on the podcast, as you guys know, I'm constantly outing myself and my flaws. Like you all get to witness it firsthand. So I just want to offer that up as like, this is such an interesting, it's personally significant, but it's significant for all of us because whether or not you have 18 in your chart, there's somewhere that you're hard on yourself or you're hard on other people or you, you know you're too prone to perfectionism or you want to hide the shadows you know you don't want to admit that you have faults we want to present a perfect facade or anything like that and it's just it's just not true you know 
In the gene keys, this the shadow of this one is judgment, the gift is integrity, and the city is perfection. But it's funny because, of course, the it's it's about being perfectly imperfect. And as far as the judgment piece goes, Richard Rudd says, all judgment is self-judgment. So if you want to be proactive here at this eclipse, it's like, look at what fits the bill. Everything I just said and prepare to let it go. Let it go willingly. Don't fight it. Okay, so my journal prompt for this one is, where is the fear of judgment and the harsh expectation of perfection holding you back? Where can we just let it go? So let's go. We're going to take that and apply it to the area of your life that that this eclipse is happening in. I'm going to briefly run through all 12 signs. Make sure you listen for your rising sign to understand how and where to apply the guidance. So our equation, we've got a full moon lunar eclipse. Big old endings, right? Gate 18, judgment, perfectionism, picky, 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 right? Or perfection and the imperfection, and then the house that this is happening in. Okay, so if you are in Aries rising, this is happening in your house that is about one on one relationships, partnerships, and collaborations. For my Taurus rising, this is everyday work, habits, routines, health, and wellness. Gemini rising, this is your area of creative self-expression, fun, children, romance, and charisma. Cancer rising, this is home. This is at home, your home environment, family, nurturing, and heritage. For Leo rising, this is your mind. It's the mental plane, communication, local travel, socialization. For Virgo risings like myself, it's your physical body, personal possessions, values, and wealth. Libra rising, this is the self, personal identity, and your appearance. Scorpio rising, it's around spirituality, healing, surrender, retreat, and mysticism. For Sagittarius rising, this is your community, friend groups, social network, being a humanitarian. For Capricorn rising, this is happening in your career house, professional and public status, discipline, and achievement. Aquarius rising, this is your area of higher learning, world travel, philosophy, and religion. And for Pisces rising, this is shadow work, power and control, and deep transformation. This is the stuff you don't want to look at. (laughs) So I just say with 18 in play, this is definitely the time to stop picking at yourself or others, stop criticizing, stop comparing yourself. Just refine and align instead of picking apart. Okay, that's it. Remember to listen to the beauty meditation for Libra, like I said, in at home for yourself in your treatment room, however you want to do it. Share it with others. I think that's fantastic. Um, I love it when people share on Instagram that they're using it. It makes me so happy. You have no idea. I just I love, love, love it. And I will have a post up for Instagram as well for all of this information. Yeah. And if you would be so kind as to leave the pod a five-star rating review on Apple, send me that screenshot to the email linked in the show notes. I'll get you over the PDF gate guide, and then you can find all of your gates along with your free charts and know everything you need to know to become an expert in yourself and your design. You know where to find everything. Find me over on Instagram at Michaela McLean. And of course, until next time, have a beautiful day.